All right, so here I am in this freeware program to font. And I have carefully used the, the given typefaces within DeFont and have individually set each letter. But I haven't done anything to make these my own vector shapes yet. And I'll show you how we can do that, right? Like if I didn't want the A to be so fuzzy, what could I do? Well, that's where you use your, your vector knowledge, right? So on top of the text shapes, I can draw with my pencil tool and make vector shapes that I add to the image, right? And the, the best tool to use is probably the pen tool. And right now it has a border turned on it, which I'm going to want to turn off. But this is called augmenting existing type. So let me just close the shape. So I can take that border off. and instead fill it with a black background. And then everything we did for our font, or for, sorry, our, um, our logo project comes to bear here. You can soften edges. You can convert from straights to curves. And what I'm doing is augmenting that A. So it kind of transitions. And I can add shapes to it. So here's another one. This is all just using the freeware. I don't like that it's defaulting to the border, but I can work with it. So I just make my shape. I'm basically tracing over the typeface and then closing. I want to close my paths. Turn off the stroke on it, fill it with solid black. And these are now paths, right? So I can lock them as I go. If I double click, I can see the anchors. I can round them out. I can move them. I can add more. and stretch them. All the things we dealt with when we were doing logo design. So if I want to just bow out that shape. And my advice is not to like overthink it or treat each letter form like it's its own separate logo. We're not trying to be that precious with it, but I'm just showing you how you do have a lot of control of how this type appears. I can round it. And so if you like a typeface as it is, except for just a few things you would like to change, you can do that by customizing the vectors on top, right? And it all takes time and patience, but it's all possible. And as long as there's solid black, 
They will all work together. It'll just be cutouts. I'm going to do one more shape. I'm going to lock the others just so it doesn't get confused. Give me a mighty big border. But yeah, I'm just going to smooth this out. Make that into a closed path. Turn off the border. Fill it. Make sure that that's solid black. Double click it, add an anchor point, just move it up a little. All right. So I'll leave a little bit of that fuzzy edge just to, to make people wonder. And then I decide I want a little hook here. So lock the others before I start a new one. And I'm just not even pulling any curves. I'm just doing it with all straights for now, because I can always modify the curves after. Then I turn off the border, turn on the fill, make sure it's solid black. Then I can stretch the individual anchors and round them if I want, either by double clicking, I'm just using the rounding tool. The rounding handles seem to work pretty well. But if I wanna pull from the Bezier handles, I can certainly do that too. And remember, you don't always have to create new points. Sometimes you want to just delete them. Okay. So now I have that set. And that's for that part of the card. So now what do I do? I'm going to save it, but without the image. And instead of just, um, just turning them off, I'm actually going to delete them so they're not part of the vector information. And then I'm going to export. And now this is my final plague SVG that I moved to my folder. There's my folder. So I go to downloads. Go to my untitled. my final plague SVG. My final, final plague SVG. So you can see how it's refined. It's gone from this. Here, let me show you these a little bit bigger. So it's gone from this there's even something before that, if you remember, more rigid. So even though I haven't actually changed uh, the individual typeface at all, I've changed the, the placement and the setting of them quite a bit. And now here, I finally augmented and added on to the vector and made it my own.
at least with the A. So I have my own typeface design here, or logo type, if you like. Now I have to do the same thing with anxiety. And to do that, I need to bring in work from the untitled SVG that I last saved, which has the sketch in it. Or if I'm organized and you know knew where I was, I can just use Command Z and go back to before I outputted it. So here I have my sketches. Now I can turn off that sketch and really delete it. I have to unlock it before I can delete it. Whoops, the wrong one. And I can unlock and delete all of this text and all of those paths. That's why I had to save it first. Now I can unlock that sketch and I'm going to bring in upload image, my anxiety SVG. It's not my final one yet because I haven't fit it onto my image. It comes in, you can see all the text layers involved. There are a lot of them. But while it is all together, I can shrink it and place it. Rotate it. And then what's great is I can individually set them again. Rotate them, move them. Delete unneeded empty ones. And use your arrow keys to nudge. Play with rotation. Just treating it like an image. But in Defont, I can't stretch them. So they're always, if they're a typeface, they has to stay as the typeface. But I can change their size, their rotation. I can make them appear bold by giving them a border. And just like a word processor, I could uh, swap these for a different typeface at any time. I can play with them in different ways. But I think this is working. I think it's fairly readable. All right. So now that I have anxiety set, I can. lock this or turn it off and then i can export my final anxiety placement so it's a lot of work to customize existing typefaces but it will give me a lot of options 